In today's video, I'm gonna go over how to film sports like a professional sports videographer on a game day. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. What is up? Welcome back. Pete here. What is up y'all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Pete Gottschalk, content producer for Major League Baseball, if you are new to the channel. We make videos here revolving around sports videography, how to become a better sports videographer, and just general lifestyle stuff in the industry and in my own life. If you're new here, make sure you like and subscribe. But in today's video, as I already mentioned, I'm going to be going over how you can film sports like me on a game day. To preface this video, I'm gonna be going over kind of my game day routine and I'm gonna be bringing in experience from when I worked at the University of Georgia as a student intern doing, you know, football, baseball, basketball, whatever, DC United in Major League Soccer, and then also at MLB for the last couple of years. Therefore, I'm going to kind of put a broad umbrella over this video. I'm gonna try and talk about a game day process that I think would work for all sports, or here and there go off little tangents on different sports and, and, and things specific to those, those game days that, that, you know, might apply to you and your situation. So I'm gonna be operating under a big umbrella today. Take it with a grain of salt. Hopefully you guys can get some value out of this video. I think it's important, some of these points. So let's get right into it. The first thing that I want to go over is showing up early. Any sports videographer or photographer or anyone in sports knows that a lot of stuff goes on before the game. So you need to be there, give yourself ample time to prepare for anything that happens pre-game. And then also, of course, during the game, and post game. And showing up early really gives you a good window for that. When I worked at the University of Georgia for a noon kickoff, we would show up at 8 a.m. For a 3.30 kickoff, we would show up at like 11 or 11.30, depending on what is going on pregame. And that was just to get us into the stadium, give us ample time to find a, a workspace to put our gear, get our lenses out, charge any batteries if necessary. Another point, charge your batteries in the night before so you don't have to do this step and you're ready to go already. And of course that applies to any gimbals or other necessary pieces of gear that you're gonna need charged. Whether you're shooting college or NFL football, a lot of the times there's gonna be requests for arrivals and those are gonna happen probably three hours before the game. You gotta be ready to prepare for that. If you show up four hours before, that gives you an hour of time to you know, get a camera ready, format your cards, get everything you need, build your gimbal, get any audio situation settled and worked out. A lot of the times I've found in pretty much every job that I've had in sports, the, the pre-game and all the stuff that leads up to the game is way more hard of, harder of a lift than you know the game itself. Because the game itself, you, you're not really there to control anything. You're kind of reacting to things in front of you. Working at MLB, we also do this for playoffs. We get there like six, seven hours before the game. It sounds crazy, but a lot of the baseball guys get there really early and it's important to be able to capture their arrivals. For normal games, like a regular season game, I'm getting there probably three, three and a half hours early to get batting practice. Like I said, a lot of these things, these guys, these, these are their jobs. Getting there early and before even the players get there is crucial to maximizing your success on a game day. Now, after you shoot your arrivals or your tailgating shots or your, your scenics of the stadium, wherever you're at, before warmups, you need to reach your point of contact for that game. What do I mean by that? That is establish a relationship or get a phone number of, you know, an SID if you're working in college or if you're working in professional sports, maybe a social person, right? That can be your own social person or if you're working for a league, establish a relationship with the person who's running the social for a team you're gonna be providing content for. SIDs oftentimes also work the social aspect of things for college sports, especially if you're a little smaller. That is crucial in college to kind of link up with them before the game, before warmups and, and get a rundown of what they want throughout the day. During warmups, during the game, during post game, what kind of cadence are they gonna be using on social? Are you gonna be having to be wary of music or sponsors, avoid certain players or whatnot? There's so many questions that you might need answered. So before warmups, two hours before the game, two to three hours, make sure you establish that connection. A couple other questions this person might be able to answer is access, where you can go on the field or in the huddle or wherever, where you can't go. If certain players don't like cameras in their faces or maybe they do like cameras in their faces, an SID or a point of contact on the field, on the team, with the team can answer those types of questions. If they can't answer those types of questions, make sure you get a lay of the land during this time as well. Go check out the photo well, go check out the sidelines, go check out where you'll be sitting under the basket. Just get your bearings and then kind of gauge on, on security 
maybe introduce yourself to a security guard, be friendly with everyone and all the people around you because ultimately that's gonna get you further than being, you know, kind of mean because that's gonna get you nowhere, I promise you. Use that time to connect with your point of contact, SIDs, social people, answer any access questions, and then also get your bearings. As for pregame and pregame warmups itself, use this time and, and your proximity to players to kind of get a lot more detail shots. This is one of the points I want to emphasize during this video is get detail shots. I see a lot of editors and, and people who make reels where it's just action and in-game stuff. Pre-game is your opportunity to kind of get your football players putting their helmets on, carrying their helmets out, their gear out, putting their gloves on. If you're shooting baseball, getting pine tar on the bat, putting their cleats on, tying their shoes if you're shooting basketball, whatever. This is your opportunity to get those shots, to get up close, get tight. Maybe if a player likes interacting with a the camera, they'll say something to you like, we're ready for the game, something like that. Make sure you get those types of shots. That is the difference between being good and great in this industry is, is those detail shots, in my humble opinion. In addition to that, make sure you also get some fans filing in. Anything necessary to the story, fans are such an integral part to any game atmosphere, so I think it is also crucial to get that type of stuff. This is also your opportunity if you're shooting a football or a basketball, if you do have this access, to get audio from coaches in the huddle, right? Like I said, with players, if they're interacting with the camera or they're giving a pregame speech, Sometimes that audio is very crucial to building a storyline of the game. Make sure you have a good audio setup. Make sure you have a good mic on there. Make sure your levels are all in order so you're not blown out or too low. And that can be a good shot to get during pregame. And it will really help you build a good storyline for your game recap or whatever you're making throughout the day. On to your responsibilities in game. Now, before you get the game going, before tip, before kickoff, make sure you go back into your workroom, the media workroom, and get situated. Make sure you have some water, some sunscreen if you're shooting outdoors, and an extra battery and an extra SD card, any other supplies that you could possibly need during the game so you do not have to run back into the media room or have someone do it for you. You need to be prepared, and that little window between warm-ups and, and first pitch will always give you that, that, that time to, to be able to prepare. In my own personal experience, the game is always Always the easy part. It's gonna write itself, whether it's a boring game or a really intense high action game, the game is gonna write itself. If you are properly prepared for it, it won't be too heavy of a lift for you. One tip that has really helped me that I learned really early on, luckily learned really on at Georgia, is to slate your clips. And what do I mean by slating? I've talked about this before, but it is if after you get a scoring play, let's say there's a 15 yard touchdown, quarterback throws a touchdown in the back corner of the end zone. After that play, after you stop recording on your clip, put your hand in front of the lens, record, stop record, and that gives you a black screen when you're looking through in Finder or whatever software you're using. You'll be able to see that black screen and the clip before it is a scoring play or a play you wanna keep. I do this in every game I shoot, whether it's baseball or anything else. I always slate my clips and it just saves you so much time on the back end and it helps you as you're scrolling through 500 clips throughout a game, not lose stuff. I'll do this after I get a good B-roll shot of Ronald Acuna stepping into the box. I'll do this for Max Fried throwing a strikeout or whatever it be. I always slate my clips and it's something that I learned early on that I'm very thankful I did. While you are in game, it is also important to be aware of certain situations. If you know that there is one runner on first base and there's one out, the double play is intact. Maybe you focus on the shortstop or the second baseman. You need to be aware of these situations in certain games where the ball is on the field, how many outs there are, what's the score, because certain players will react more during certain situations and the ball might go to a certain spot on the field. It's important to be aware of all these things. And lastly, while you're in the game, make sure you're safe. Be aware when you're on the sidelines of a football game so you're not getting hit really hard by a player coming out of bounds. And be aware when you're in the photo well when a certain batter's up in case a, ba a ball is gonna come into the photo well and, and could potentially harm you. Please be safe when you're shooting as well. Wear a helmet if you need. And finally, let's move on to post game. After the final buzzer goes, after the final whistle goes, make sure you are getting the shots that are needed to fulfill the story. If it is a player who is walking off in the agony of defeat or super elated quarterback throwing a game-winning touchdown, make sure you are aware of where those players are and, and who's gonna react more to certain situations. You need to capture all of these shots to kind of complete the story. 
Sometimes it's good to think about the shot that not everyone else is getting. If it's that player who's walking off dejected in defeat and everyone else is shooting the celebration of one team, maybe shoot that, that player who's walking off because you never know. There could be some wild comeback story and that shot could be worth a million in a calendar year. Post game, the handshakes, the celebrations is where you get the good emotions, the raw emotions from the players that will really complete your storyline during a game. After you pack up, and whenever you get home or back to your office, make sure you are dumping your cards immediately. Never hold on to your footage, dump them immediately, back them up again if you feel comfortable doing that. The faster you do this post-processing stuff, the easier it's gonna be. Because if you wait and wait, you just push it off, push it off. And it's important to get these things into your hard drives and labeled right when you get home or to your office. The worst case scenario is you forget to dump a game and then you format your card for the next game. Trust me, I know people who have done it, Make sure you do all these things immediately. Label your footage right away. If you want to know my labeling process, I've done it before. I've talked about it, I've made a video on it. Go check that out now. I will link it down below. This type of process is where slating helps you a lot. As I mentioned earlier, it will save you a lot of time. Go through all your files. Once you're done with that, call it a day, get some rest. Anyways, y'all, I hope you were able to get some value out of this video. This is just kind of some processes that I have learned over the years, shooting games in multiple different sports. If you have any questions or concerns, please comment them below and I'll see y'all in the next video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks.